Right, good afternoon YouTube, how are we all doing? This is my uh, third attempt at this video. I've, uh, I don't seem to be able to get in any flow this morning. I'm tripping over all my words and things like that. I went to a beer festival last night. Um, bumped into one of the guys from the pipe club. You always find pipe smokers everywhere. Uh, I, I had a few dregs of Boswell's best left, so we both uh, pretty much shared that between us sort of thing. So I had another freezing cold smoke next to the Nottingham Canal uh, while sampling some... Rather enjoyable beers, I have to say. So, um, first things first, the housekeeping this morning. Um, I'm smoking some five-year-old Corellia hand-rolling tobacco while drinking my staple, which is the uh, Wittol's Russian Caravan Tea, white with two sugars. So, I've not really uploaded um, any videos this week. I've been really, really busy. Um, I didn't do my aftermath of the pipe club like I normally do. I had a, a couple a couple of beers more than um, my tolerance level allows, which for somebody who only drinks once a month is not very high, to be honest. So I felt absolutely stinking awful on Tuesday. Um, spent most of the day cleaning the house, trying not to be sick while scrubbing floors and things like that. So fun and games. So talking about the pipe club, big thanks to everybody who turned up. It was absolutely freezing, and it was literally freezing temperatures. Uh, we had about 20 people turned up, which is I was only expecting about, God, probably expecting about 12 people. That's all I really bought tobacco for. So um, the tobacco selection had depleted by the time most people turned up. Which I'm sorry about, but, but hey, I didn't expect so many of you to turn up. Um, the tobaccos I tried on that night, I tried a slight variation on my uh, Yatagan, the Gauntlet's Yatagan blend that I produce. Um, this is done by Christoph, one of our uh, one of our members. He um, basically took the constituent parts and blended it up in different ratios himself, and he used different plugs and some slightly different Virginias and things like that in there. Um, and also left it to mature for a couple of months inside a humidor, and it tasted spectacular. It had a lot more strength and a lot more body to it. Whereas yet again, it's quite a mild sort of like Turkish mixture. This gave it a lot more darker fire killed Virginia, and it gave it a lot more oomph and power. That was a very enjoyable smoke. Um, the pipe club tobaccos that I tried was my uh, unknown blend, uh, which I've talked about before. Which it was, um, it came from uh, Altadis or Consolidated, uh, but nobody's got any ideas which what tobacco it was that was sent. I've had a quick flick through tobacco reviews, can't find any references to it, anything that matches the descriptions. Um, out of, out of the, the pack, I thought it smelled a little bit like rum and raisin. Um, most people came to the conclusion of it smells quite rummy and it smells very familiar. Um, most thought rum and raisin. There was also another consensus that it was kind of um, Christmas cake with marzipan sort of aroma to it. A few other people mentioned other ones. Um, somebody said it was like a, a really old version of Optimum. Um, although it's an American blended, not a Danish blended tobacco. Um, quite a few others thought they could smell chocolate, there was some reckoned uh, other dried fruits, there was vanilla, there was cherry, um, other just like sweet flavours, some reckoned it had a slightly sherry kind of aroma to it, um, but on the whole the general consensus was rum and raisin with a few thinking Christmas pudding, so what very little I've got left, and it's only available in the shop I'm afraid, if any of you want to try it, you'd have, you'd have to call to order some, I don't have enough to put on the website. Um, if you want some, it's basically called the Unknown Tobacco. Uh, give us a call, I'll sort some out for you. But there isn't a lot left. A lot of people are buying it now, so I, I give it about a week, week and a half, and it, it's gone. When it's gone, it's gone, sort of thing. So, as well as that, um, I also tried some of the Hallow the Wind. Um, I say tried, I've, I've smoked it several times before. Uh, it's, an it's a very, very enjoyable tobacco. Um, I'd compare it quite um, favourably to Three Nuns. It's got the same kind of strong Virginia flavours with that kind of pungent... Per I don't know if there is Perique in How of the Wind, I can't remember, I need to look it up. But it kind of has that sort of like pungent tang to it and the, the nicotine kind of progressively grows as you smoke your way through the bowl. So it starts off rich and full in flavour but relatively light in nicotine and body. And as you smoke your way through it kind of increases. The flavours are absolutely beautiful. I love that tobacco. I say it's dark, kind of Virginia, Perique type flavours. Beautiful. I love the stuff. Um, tried some Squadron Leader as well. That was very, very, very pleasant. That was a great Balkan tobacco. I quite enjoyed that. Um, some lovely sour notes to it. Um, I need to smoke it again because I drank quite a bit when I smoked that part, and that's pretty much all I remember is I enjoyed it. 
and some sour notes. That's the only thing I can remember. Um, I may have tried another tobacco on the night, but I really can't can't recall. I this is why I should write my tasting notes and shoot my tasting videos. I tend to uh, I tend to forget a lot of things, and if I don't write my notes, which I didn't do on Monday night, I can't remember feck all. So. With it being freezing cold still at the moment, I've been uh, I've been hitting the kind of medicated menthol eucalyptus spearminty type snuffs to unblock my uh, unblock my sinuses. Uh, this week I've predominantly been taking two snuffs uh, that fit that line. Um, as many of you know, uh, Freiburg and Treyer's um, uh, Old Paris is my go-to snuff, so I'm always dabbing into that as well. But um, say so the two I've been trying. I've been using mostly over this week to keep my uh, keep my sinuses unblocked, which to be honest I feel in a little bit that way at the moment, um, is Wilson's and Sharrow's Prime Minister. Now this is, according to my cheat sheet I generated a couple of years ago from hopping around a few other people's websites and looking at what other people say to these things, uh, a lot have Prime Minister down as kind of its, uh, uh, is it menthol, spearmint, uh, camphor, citrus and eucalyptus if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I know what they mean about the um, the spearmint. It's heavily spearmint flavoured. There is kind of that menthol note to it as well. But on the whole, it's mainly spearmint. You don't really get the citrus or the camphor out of the tin. Um, but a slight little pinch. And you instantly hit with kind of, there's a sharp citrus tang to it. But on the whole, it's a, a beautiful natural spearmint aroma. Um, I prefer it over the silver dollar spearmint, to be honest. It's a, it's a very, very enjoyable snuff. Unbox the sinuses very well from the menthol and the eucalyptus in there, but on the whole, the aroma is of spearmint, and I love the spearmint aroma that you get from this. It's not like powerful like um, Hedges is for clearing out the sinuses. It's quite a, it's a very, very short-lived, sharp, just like open up of the sinuses. A lovely say spearmint aroma to it. It doesn't last particularly long. It's um, it's a relatively easy to take snuff. Uh, for a Wilson's one, it feels a little bit more moist than a few others. Um, it's a little bit darker as well compared to their SPs and some of their other snuffs that I quite like taking. Um, probably the dumbest thing I've ever just tried to do. But it's uh, like I say. A very, very pleasantly enjoyable snuff. If you fancy a change from the menthols and you want something to unblock the sinuses, Prime Minister's a great, great spearmint snuff to take. Uh, now, as well as that, for when I am feeling bunged up, predominantly earlier on in the morning, I take this, I've been taking this more in the afternoons. Um, I've been on the Ozona, Ozona President snuff. Now, this, this is brilliant. Um, I prefer it to Red Bull. It's made by the same guys, made by Poshules in Germany. Um, it's kind of it's quite dark in colour. I'm loading myself up. Um, almost got kind of a, a ruby red kind of tinge to it as well. Uh, there's a decent amount of moisture in it. It clumps up extremely well. When you rub it against your fingers, it feels quite quite gritty, but it it's not at all once you put it up the nose. There's a a good instant hit. Doesn't work too well when you've got a nose full of Prime Minister, kind of grinding it out a little bit. But you get a good hit from it. There's, it's relatively tingles a relatively moderate amount, if you like. Um, it's got a bit of sharpness to it. It fades away quickly, but it unblocks the sinuses very, very well. It doesn't have a long lingering um, scent to it either. It's just a good, like, quick unblock of the nose sort of thing. There is one thing I did notice from taking this. Um, I've only been digging into the Prime Minister for sort of like half the week. I've been at this all week sort of thing. Um, is this snuff dissolves very, very well up your nose. Um, you don't, I wake up the next morning, blow my nose, I'm relatively, it's relatively clean. It's not full of snuff. I don't feel it running down the back of my throat all day. It just seems to, seems to disappear. But it's a, it, it's good for a very, very light blockage. If you've got a, if you are thoroughly bunged up, um, as all of you know, the, the best one for unblocking your sinuses, drains or anything, it hedges the snuff. This is the daddy for unblocking your sinuses. But if you're not, you haven't got a cold, you're just a little bit bunged up, you just read a little bit better, give those owner president a go. I say it's a, it's a very good menthol snuff. Now, 
a couple of minutes ago, I'm going to have to smoke another one now just so I can uh, take you through it a little bit better, is um, talk about the Corellia tobacco I'm smoking at the start of the video, uh, which was only 10 minutes ago, so I am, uh, I am really chain smoking today. This tobacco was discontinued in the UK, um, oh God, four or five years ago, probably longer to be honest. Um, it's a, a lovely tobacco. Um, I've got snuff all up in my nose, so I'm not going to pretend to be smelling this out of the pouch. Um, this pouch has been sat in my uh, cellar and cupboard, along with my pipe, some or quite a lot of my pipe tobaccos for five, six years maybe. This is probably one of the oldest unopened tobacco products I have. Um, it's a dark, it's a dark tobacco, predominantly fire cured. We're not quite, we're not talking quite as dark as. Um, you can see that just there. We're not talking quite as dark as Goua or your French style tobaccos, but it's not far off. The um, the colouring of it is kind of it's between Goua, Golden Virginia, Goua Cutter's Choice, that sort of thing. It's not a light Virginia tobacco. Um, on the whole, I believe it's mainly Virginias. There may be a bit of Orientals in this as well. It's, after all, it's a Greek tobacco. Um, out of the pouch, it's got a very, very pungent, almost aromatic aroma to it. I think the uh, slightly longer aging has brought out more aromas. Um, so it's kind of like pungent. There's like it's kind of a figgy, but not a perique figgy. It's kind of like figgy, plummy, those dark, pungent fruits sort of thing. Um, there's some lovely sweetness to it as well. Uh, it smokes beautifully. It's it's very, very rich, and it's. it's very very smooth as well um, the f it's very dirty earthy flavors um, these kind of like hints of say mainly it's, it's earths leathers dirts those kind of dark strong flavors uh, there's a lovely kind of sweetness to it from it's like a Virginia sweetness um, and the finish is is smooth it doesn't taste chemically it's not harsh it doesn't catch your throat um, so I, I smoke this all the time um, a lot of these style of tobaccos have gone off the market. I used to be a big fan of Sweet Afton, uh, Three Castles. They've all they've all been delisted now. So's this along with it. Uh, Crossroads was another favourite of mine for some darker, like Virginia and Burley and Oriental flavours. Those tobaccos have all gone. So I've pretty much weaned myself down um, onto Pueblo, which is predominantly the rolling tobacco I smoke. Um, it's just a light, plain, straight, unflavoured, un on um, no additives, just a mild Virginia tobacco. It's normally what I smoke. But this Corellia stuff, I say I've, I've missed it. I've missed these kind of tobaccos. So I thought this morning, what the hell? It's, I'm saving it for a rainy day. Um, it's not raining today, but it's fucking freezing out there. So uh, we dig into some of this. Um, I'm gonna have another one just now. So like I say, so when it's smoking, it's it's got some lovely flavours to it. It's it's smooth. It carries a lot of nicotine. For those, well, most people who smoke roll up smoke for nicotine. Um, if you like your stronger tobaccos, go for it. It's not available in the UK. It's still available in Greece. I'm assuming it's still available in other parts of Europe as well. If you um, say so if you like your medium to full flavoured roll in tobaccos, you ever see a packet of this anywhere? Just get yourself a packet. It it's definitely worth a try. Uh, so that's my last one. I've opened it now. It's going to last me a couple of days. So give it a give it a try if you get a chance, sort of thing. Um, as many of you are aware, I uh, I work at Gauntlet's, kind of a tobacconist in the city centre. We're also wine uh, a wine merchant and a whiskey specialist. Um, <clears throat> and with a little bit of encouragement, I've uh, we've convinced Chris, who's our uh, whiskey buyer and whiskey manager and expert in the shop, to uh, to start doing YouTube videos as well. So um, so we've started the Good Dram Show. Um, basically, we've been experimenting over the last couple of weeks, different ways of filming and things like that. Um, some of the episodes don't come out very well. I tried recording the audio on my phone. Uh, it's not the clearest. One of the videos, my phone for some reason didn't save the file, so I've had to tweak the audio from the camera. The camera was a good distance away from Chris when he's filming. So one of them, the audio is very, very low, but check them out. There's not there isn't anything this guy does not know about whiskey um, the amount of things he's sent to try the amount of whiskies he's tried and the the, in, the in-depth knowledge he has on whiskey is unbelievable I just wish I knew that much about tobacco um, so check him out it's the uh, the good dram show uh, so so far there's um, 
there's only three videos on there. There's sort of like four whiskey reviews and an introduction. Uh, we're going to be filming every Wednesday, so there should be up there should be new videos up there for by Friday, Saturday, every week sort of thing. But go uh, go check Chris out if you if you're into your whiskies, your scotches, your bourbons. He covers every aspect of whiskey sort of thing. Check him out. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy. Uh, he's a great guy as well. I say he's a. I've worked with him every day. He's a brilliant guy. Um, check out his blogs as well. He's so many tasting notes and reviews he's written over the years. Check him out. I say he's a wonderful chap. Um, there was a few other things I wanted to talk about today, and a lot of them have slipped my mind now. Um, in response to uh, FT's question uh, comments on the uh, old Paris, I agree with you on that. Leather and bookshops. I do think it has kind of a, a red wine sort of smell to it. It took me a long time to put my finger on it, um, and it's through watching other people and reading other people's reviews, uh, pinning down the flavour sort of thing. But I say, I'm, I hope, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's my my staple. I have tons of that snuff everywhere. No matter where I am, there is always some old Paris kicking around. Um, uh, what else did we want to talk about today? I'm sure there was a few things. Oh, it slipped my memory. But anyway, so I'm going to wrap this video up now. Uh, I think I've covered everything, everything I wanted to. Uh, I will be back with some more pipe tobacco reviews um, throughout the week, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm off on Tuesday, so... And I'll finally get around to smoking no name number two. Mark, again, thank you very, very much. And thanks again for the honeymead. It's gone down extremely well. Uh, the guys at the Pipe Club all enjoyed it who tried it. And uh, thank you very much for sharing, matey. So um, until then, don't forget to get your uh, entries in for the competition. Um, I may be adding a few more prizes at some point. Uh, I'm off to Wilson's in the next couple of days. Well, in about the next week sort of thing. So there may be some snuffs added to the collection as well. Um, so yeah, get your entry in the most challenging, unusual or crazy place you've smoked your pipe. Um, if you can't do a video response, it's not a problem, just stick it in the uh, in the description at the bottom. Uh, I am going to struggle to pick a winner, so I think I will just be drawing them out of a pipe box. Because the entries so far have been... They've all made me laugh, they've all made me chuckle, and I've got no idea. No idea which one to go for yet. So I say, maybe look at the draw. But until then folks, uh, keep smoking, and I'll catch you in a bit use.